Hello friends, I am Welshy, and welcome to Theory Pop. A couple of weeks ago, as I was browsing through Netflix, looking for the latest thing to obsess over, I stumbled across a delightfully funny, visually vibrant, and occasionally uncomfortable series. After watching the first couple of episodes, I was hooked, so in today's video, I'm going to take a look at the latest adult animated comedy to hit Netflix, Tuca and Bertie. Be warned, if you haven't seen the show yet, there will be spoilers ahead. And, as Tuca and Bertie does address some sensitive subject matter, I have placed some content warnings for this video in the description below. With those warnings done, let's take a look at Tuca and Bertie. Tuca and Bertie is an adult animated sitcom created by Lisa Hannawalt, the production designer for another Netflix animated series, Bojack Horseman. The series focuses on two bird women in their 30s, long-time best friends living in the same apartment building, and follows them as they navigate new stages in their lives. Tuca has just moved out of their apartment as Bertie's boyfriend Speckle moves in. The tone blends humour, with situations and antics that sit well within sitcom territory, with heavier topics. Bertie, the song thrush who appears to be a well-adjusted adult with everything in her life sorted out, deals with bouts of anxiety and instances of sexual harassment in the workplace. Her friend Tuca, a boisterous and energetic toucan, seems carefree and zesty on the surface, but struggles to make meaningful connections with the people around her. There's a lot of elements that can be discussed about Tuca and Bertie, but for this video I want to focus on how the show presents shifts in perspective. Specifically, I'll be exploring two aspects. First, how changes in visual style can represent a change in a character's perception of the world. And second, characters viewing a familiar situation or event from the outside, and how that subsequently affects their perspective. First up, let's look at the visual side of the show. Tuca and Bertie presents its world and characters in a bright, vibrant style of animation, with bold colours and often surreal imagery, such as this cake inhabited by Speckle's grandmother. Be a good boy and eat your gamby. This visual style makes up the majority of the show's presentation, and proves to be a treat for the eyes. We become so used to this presentation of Tuca and Bertie's world that, when a change in the animation style does occur, it draws our attention towards a shift in the tone of a scene. We see the characters in a different way, both in their literal on-screen representation, and in their actions and behaviours. This is something Tuca and Bertie does with great effect. Those visual changes we are treated to are not just a method with which to emphasise an emotional scene or epiphany, but help us really get into the minds of the characters and see how their own perspectives have changed and altered as they have grown. Let's take Tuca as an example. In episode 5, Plumage, Tuca visits her rich aunt Tallulah. While relaxing in the pool, Tuca is holding a photo album containing images of her and her mother. However, when she shares with Speckle her memories of her mother, the scene transitions to a very different animation style. This takes the form of a child's craft project, with simple shapes and forms made up of popsicle sticks, yarn and pipe cleaners. This was how Tuca saw the world when she was young. Everything was well defined, bright and bold, and the world was simple and easy to understand. When Tuca mentions her mother's death, the yarn figure of her mother unravels, along with Tuca's siblings. Things literally begin to fall apart. It was at this point when Tuca's view of the world around her changed. The next flashback we have to Tuca's childhood is in episode 7, Yeast Week. Yeast Week! While the toucan is in the hospital, she remembers being in the waiting room with Aunt Tallulah after her mother had been in an accident. This time, the memory is shown in black and white, drained of all colour. The animation itself is reserved, with minimal motion presented instead as individual still images, like a slideshow, each moment burned into Tuca's memory. Her childlike way of perceiving the world and the people around her was stripped away, replaced instead by this starker, duller reality. Of course, Tuca now sees the colour and vibrancy in the world again as an adult, but it's not the same as the softer, more innocent view she held as a child. We see a similar change in the animation for Bertie. In episode 9, The Jelly Lakes, Tuca and Bertie go to Bertie's family's cabin by the lake, where it is magically always summer. Bertie confides in Tuca something she doesn't appear to have told anyone else. When she was 12 years old, Bertie spent the summer training to swim to an island in the middle of the lake. 
The day she was meant to swim to Peanut Butter Island, she arrived at the dock really early and was greeted by the lifeguard. He asks to show her something in the woods, where it is heavily implied he assaulted her. While telling Tuka about this traumatic experience, the animation changes. The camera pans into the egg art that Tuka had been holding, taking on the appearance of layered paper art. Unlike with Tuka's flashback, we aren't presented with Bertie's perspective on the world as a child, but instead how she sees what happened to her. The colours are more muted, and all the detail is removed from this memory, leaving only silhouettes of this trauma. This art style isn't just confined to the memory, but encroaches into Bertie's present day consciousness. As she sinks in the jelly lake, the weeds below the surface change into grasping paper trees that reach up for her. This juxtaposition of the brighter, more detailed Bertie meeting and accepting her younger self shows how much she has grown and achieved in spite of such trauma. Another change of visual style appears in episode 6, The Open House, this time with Speckle pulling Bertie into the blueprints he has drawn up for the house they are prospectively purchasing. As Speckle shows Bertie his plans and designs for renovating the house, the way the characters are animated and move is the same as the rest of the show. This is how Speckle sees the future, living in a dream home with Bertie. Bertie's view, however, twists the scene as time advances rapidly and an elderly Speckle sits before her. One partner is sharing their view, but it is interpreted differently by the other. This reflects their positions on life. Speckle is certain about living with Bertie, and has things figured out and stable. Bertie also wants to be with Speckle and has stability in her life, but she has issues with commitment and with trusting people, resulting in a warped version of Speckle's vision. Tuka and Bertie makes great use of different animated styles to represent different ways of perceiving the world and characters' internal thoughts and emotional states, but the show also places its characters in positions where they are able to see a familiar situation from a whole new perspective, from the outside as an observer. The best example of this is Bertie's apprenticeship with Pastry Pete. In episode 5, Bertie has been to an empowering meeting of Wootus, but immediately fails to assert herself around Pastry Pete. Pete uses his position of power, and Bertie's dream of being a pastry chef, to effectively control the song thrush. His behaviour is domineering and controlling, expecting Bertie respond to every demand he makes with, Yes Chef, cutting off her responses and questions. Uh, okay, hey, can we just- Now you try. I need to say something. <clears throat> yes, chef. Oh. When making a banana roux, he invites Bertie to view the process close up. When Bertie tries to move away from the pot, the penguin grabs her head and forcibly holds her in place, pushing her face closer to the rising steam. Bertie is clearly uncomfortable, but doesn't confront Pete about his behaviour. Bertie comes to accept Pete's actions as typical behaviour in a professional chef's kitchen. However, when she sees the exact same situation from the outside, this changes. When Pastry Pete tries to do the same thing to another young bird woman, Dakota, grabbing her head and trying to force her over the uncomfortably warm banana roux, Bertie becomes uncomfortable herself. Dakota, however, is not Bertie, and unlike the song thrush, she angrily confronts Pete and storms out of the bakery. Dakota asks Bertie if anything like this has happened before, with Bertie stammering an unsatisfactory answer. You don't understand. It's just part of the job. And how he teaches. He's very passionate. Why are you defending him? I'm not trying to... I don't know. And you didn't warn me. You know what he did was wrong, right? Despite Pete's actions making her feel uncomfortable, Bertie is only forced to confront this when she sees the situation from the outside as an external observer. This third person perspective, a mirror of her own experience, allows her to recognise that Pete had abused his power and position as a famous chef, and Bertie's admiration of and trust in him in order to push his own demands and inappropriate behaviour onto her. It can be easier for people to identify this type of wrongdoing when it happens to others, but fail to recognise the warning signs when it happens to themselves. This realisation pushes Bertie to leave Birdtown for a while, as she struggles to come to terms with this. Tuka and Bertie doesn't shy away from difficult subjects, presenting the world from the perspective of two women, with both its joys and dangers. 
Shifts in visual style show us how the way they see the world has changed as they have grown and experienced difficult, traumatic events in their past, while an external view of a familiar event allows the characters to confront problematic behaviours that they may have otherwise accepted as normal if it was only happening to them. Though these circumstances may be awkward, even difficult to address, sometimes taking that step back to reassess how you consider them is the right way to move forward. But what do you folks think? Have you enjoyed the show so far? What subjects would you like to see tackled in a second season? Leave a comment with your thoughts below. Check out this video on the left for more thoughts and theories, and subscribe to stay up to date with the latest videos, and I'll see you next time.